Summary of Enduring Love by Ian McEwan. Joe Rose and his wife, Clarissa Mellon, are having a picnic in the woods of England when they hear a child crying out for help. Harry Gad, a kid, is in the basket of a hot air balloon, which the wind is about to blow away. James Gad, his grandpa, is working hard to fix the basket to the ground. As Joe runs toward the balloon to help, he is joined by several other men, including John Logan, a local doctor and former mountain rescue worker, and Jed Perry, a young man who lives alone on the money from a big inheritance. Even though the men try to help by grabbing the ropes hanging from the basket of the balloon, their actions end up making things worse. John Logan holds on to his line as a gust of wind lifts the balloon high into the air. To everyone's horror, he falls a long way and dies. Joe and Perry spend a few minutes together while they wait for the police to come after Logan falls. Perry tells Joe to pray, and when Joe says he doesn't believe in God, Perry keeps pushing him to pray. Later that night, after Joe and Clarissa have gone over the events of the day several times, Joe gets a phone call that wakes him up. On the other end of the line is Perry, who says he loves Joe and knows what he thinks Joe is feeling. Joe hangs up the phone, confused and anxious, and tells Clarissa that it was a wrong number. In the days that follow, Perry's actions become more and more strange. He has de Clerambault's syndrome, which makes him think he and Joe are in love. As a result, he starts writing Joe long letters, following him around the streets near Joe's apartment, and leaving begging phone messages on Joe's answering machine. Even though Joe tries to tell Clarissa what is going on, she doesn't believe that he is in danger. Instead, she thinks that Perry is safe and should be talked to gently and carefully. Joe goes to Oxford to see Jean Logan, who is married to John Logan's late husband. He does this partly to get away from Perry for a few hours. Jean says that she is upset and can't get over the fact that she thinks her husband was having an affair in the weeks before he died. She asks Joe about the afternoon of the accident and says she will kill her husband's claimed lover if she ever meets her. When Joe goes back to London, he finds that his relationship with Clarissa is getting worse. Because of Perry's obsession, he and his wife are no longer on the same page, and they don't trust each other. Things keep going like this until the afternoon of Clarissa's birthday luncheon, when things change. Clarissa's uncle, an old scientist and professor, comes with her and Joe. As their meal goes on, Joe sees that a woman and two men are also eating at a table nearby. Two guys with guns suddenly walked into the restaurant, walked over to a nearby table, and shot the younger of the two men sitting there. Before they could shoot him again, though, a man who Joe knows to be Jed Perry stepped in. Perry sent the men into the restaurant to kill Joe, but they accidentally killed someone who was the same age as Joe. Joe buys a gun from an old friend because he is unhappy with how the police handled the situation. Despite what has happened, the police can't see that Joe is in danger. On his way home, he gets a call from Jed Perry, who tells him that he and Clarissa are sitting in Joe's apartment and that Joe needs to come over right away. As soon as Joe got back to London, he saw that Perry and Clarissa were together. Perry tells Joe that his love for him has ruined his life, and when he pulls a knife out of his pocket to kill himself, Joe shoots him in the arm to stop him. In the last pages of the book, Joe and Clarissa go to Oxford again to see Jean Logan. They have a picnic with Jean and her kids next to a river. Two of John Logan's friends join them, a university professor and the young woman he is dating. The university lecturer says that John Logan's alleged affair did not happen. Instead, John was giving the lecturer and the young woman a ride in his car when he stopped to help the balloonists. This is what led to the events and details that made Jean suspicious. Jean Logan feels both pleased and guilty, and she wonders who can forgive her for having doubts about her husband's love. Her question makes Joe and Clarissa think about their relationship. Joe says that he might be able to forgive Clarissa someday for not taking Perry's threat seriously, but he isn't able to do so yet. About the author One of the most important British writers of the last 50 years is Ian McEwan. McEwan was born in Aldershot, Hampshire, in the south of England. 
He went to school at the University of Sussex and the University of East Anglia before releasing First Love, Last Rites, and In Between the Sheets, two collections of short stories that were so scary that people called him Ian Macabre. Over the next few years, McEwan's style changed. This change brought him much more fame and critical success with mainstream novels like Black Dogs, Amsterdam, for which he won the Man Booker Prize, and, most famously, Atonement, which Time magazine called the best novel of 2002. McEwen kept writing quickly in the years after Atonement, putting out six books between 2005 and 2016. Some of these are Saturday, which is a reaction to the war on terror and Britain's role in the invasion of Iraq, Solar, which is a satirical look at the politics of climate change, and Sweet Tooth, which is a Cold War thriller with a lot of autobiographical details. Annalena McAfee is a writer and editor and is married to Ian McEwen. They live in London. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.